Hi guys, my name is Matti Sulanto and I'm a photographer. In this video I'm gonna share my first impressions on the DxO Photo Lab 6. But first a little background. I'm a Lightroom user. I've been a Lightroom user uh, since the beginning, as long as Lightroom has existed. And I'm pretty happy with the, with the app, with Lightroom, and I'm pretty happy with my workflow. It's smooth and I get the results that I want pretty easily with Lightroom. But I have heard many good things about DxO Photo Lab 6 and I've decided to give it a try now and this is my first time using the app and these are my first impressions. Okay, I confess I have opened the app a couple of times just to see how the interface looks but this is as good as my first time using it and these are really my first impressions. So if you are an experienced DxO Photolab user, please forgive me if I ignore some of the obvious things in the app because I really don't know the app well. But I want to see how easy it is to adapt uh, from Lightroom to this app and how easy it is to get uh, similar kind of results that I usually look for when I'm working um, with Lightroom. And of course DxO has some great Black Friday deals right now so I'm gonna put a link down below, an affiliate link. So if you are thinking about purchasing one of their apps why don't you use the links down below and support my channel at the same time. I'm not importing any pictures today. I'm using the same folders where I have my Lightroom pictures. One thing I notice when I click on one of the folders is that the DxO Photo Lab prompts me to download the optical modules for the lenses that I have used for the pictures in that particular folder. And I think this is pretty smart. You only download the optical optics modules for those lenses that you have used. Why would you download um, optics modules for every lens by default because there are hundreds of lenses that you probably never have used and probably never will use. Downloading the optics modules seems to go pretty fast so I don't think it's going to slow down your workflow. You do it once when you start working with DxO Photo Lab and that's it. Another thing that I noticed right away is that DxO Photo Lab recognizes the keywords that I have used in Lightroom and it also gives me the same keyword list that I have in Lightroom and this is pretty cool. Keywords are important at least uh, for my workflow and my archival system. All right, I'm going to process now one raw picture. I'm gonna use one of the pictures that I shot for my low light street video. I'll put the link up here just in case you haven't seen that video. Please take a look. Um, I'm gonna use one of those pictures because it, I shot it on my Ricoh GR3X and the ISO was 6400 and there's a little bit of noise in that picture. I want to see how DxO Photo Lab handles the noise and sharpening. There seems to be so many sliders for all kinds of purposes and this is a little bit overwhelming. Uh, my raw settings or my raw development is or my image editing in general is pretty simple. I don't do any heavy aggressive editing and here seems to be a slider for pretty much every imaginable purpose and I don't even, I'm not even sure what I could do with all these sliders. All right, I'm going to start by adding a little bit of intensity. This intensity slider seems to be pretty much the same as the exposure slider in Lightroom. I'm going to add a little bit of intensity, pull back some of the highlights, um, then I'm going to add a little bit of contrast. Then I'm gonna push some of the shadows just a little bit. I find it odd that there is no slider for whites here. There is a slider for blacks but no slider for whites and that feels a little bit strange uh, that I can't set the white point with a separate slider like I can do in Lightroom but it seems to go pretty well like this. I like the result already and the noise and sharpness looks also really really good even though I haven't even used any of the 
noise reduction tools yet so by default this does a really really nice job and now i'm gonna use the d prime denoising technology and by the way dxo pure raw uses this exactly uh, same uh, denoising technology let's hit the button and see what happens the noise is really super nicely under control but it does not have any of that plasticky effect like Topaz Photo AI for example. DxO Photo Lab 6 also has the D Prime XD denoising technology which is their best and when I hit that I get even nicer looking result with less noise visible but still the result looks very natural and it does not look artificial or heavily manipulated or somehow AI enhanced or something like that. It looks super nice. There is still some fine noise visible just by the right amount. And these are with the default automatic settings. I didn't do anything manually yet. And uh, to be honest, there seems to be no reason to intervene manually here at least with this picture it looks super nice um, with all these automatic uh, denoising settings okay let's process one more picture this is one of the pictures from last night i was shooting some handheld night photos with my uh, ricoh gr3 this picture is slightly maybe underexposed um, because i wanted to protect the highlights I'm going to add a little bit of intensity first, like so. There is also an exposure slider, but it is grayed out by default for whatever reason. Then I like to add a little bit of contrast next. Already looks pretty good. And then I'm going to pull back some of the highlights. I find it really problematic that there is no slider for the white point um, or maybe there's something I don't understand. But other than that, it's, this is really easy to use and it's really easy to jump from Lightroom to DxO Photo Lab 6 and I like the results. Okay, now I got the picture almost the way I want. I'd still like to use the white slider, but uh, right now I don't know how to do that. But anyway, it looks still pretty good now. Let's uh, apply some deep prime uh, no denoising technology and see how it looks and um, this is by the way quite fast at least on my 14 inch macbook pro no delay whatsoever or very little delay when i'm moving the sliders or using the denoising technology or whatever the preview updates really quickly anyway now okay now the the details look really beautiful in the blue sky is almost noise free but again it does not look any kind of artificial ai enhanced picture and like i said at the start of this video this is my first time using this app and from that starting point i think this is going pretty well i get uh, really good results already and i'm starting to like uh, DxO Photo Lab 6 and uh, it is pretty easy to use and I'm sure I can figure out the white point adjustment also when I use this app a little bit more. And of course this has so many other features too other than these basic settings that I have used today. There are geometric corrections, lens corrections and everything. And I can also see that this supports soft proofing, which is great for printing. Of course, now that I'm traveling, I don't have my printer with me. That would be a bit too much to carry around, but I'd love to try printing from DxO Photo Lab 6. I'm gonna process one more picture. It's this portrait of this gentleman that I photographed the other day. He was shaving in the middle of the sidewalk and I asked him if I can take his picture and he agreed. So I took the picture with my Sony A7 IV and the 7 Artisans 35mm f2 lens. This picture looks pretty good as it is, but I still think I can make it look slightly better with a little bit of uh, raw processing. I'm gonna start by changing the color balance a little bit to uh, slightly warmer. And then I'm going to add 
and uh, some intensity and I'm gonna pull back some of the highlights and push some of the shadows but now I have the same problem that I don't know how to set the white point because there is no slider for that I'm sure I'll learn it when I use this app more I'm gonna zoom in 100% and add some micro contrast yeah now it looks pretty good, not over processed or AI enhanced. This picture does not need any kind of noise suppression because um, it's uh, shot at ISO 100 on my Sony a7 IV, so there is no noise visible whatsoever as it is. It looks like I found some kind of a workaround for that white point adjustment. I can use uh, the curves tool to move the white point and uh, it seems to work just fine but I still keep wondering why there is no separate slider for whites but uh, now this picture looks really really nice I'm pretty impressed with DxO Photo Lab 6 it seems to be quite easy to learn and intuitive even though it's full of features and it handles noise and sharpening especially well even if you have a noisy starting point and you apply D prime XD denoising technology it still does not make your picture look like plastic or some artificial piece of uh, junk so there you have it my first impressions on DxO Photo Lab 6 and one more time there's an affiliate link for some great uh, Black Friday deals for DxO apps so if you are interested to, to purchase one of their apps please use one of the links down below or the link down below and you'll support my channel at the same time thank you so much and uh, I'll see you in the next video